for the next four days, we are going to be traveling around Chiang Rai, Thailand, which is the most northern province of Thailand, seeing this incredible city, going to see mountain views that will blow your mind. We're gonna see some of the coolest Thai artwork I think that exists, period. And we're gonna to go to where Laos and Burma, or Myanmar now, and Thailand all hit, which is the, the center of the opium trade for generations. We're gonna see it all, check out the Mekong River. There is so much to see. Come with us on this adventure. After driving three hours from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai, we were pretty tired, but we couldn't help but spend the rest of the day exploring this incredible city. We started out by visiting the Chiang Rai Clock Tower, which is an absolutely beautiful work of art by an artist named Chalurm Chai Kositipat, who's mostly famous for creating Wat Song Khun, or the White Temple, which you'll see later in this video, and will absolutely blow you away. Then my daughters insisted that we go right next to the clock tower to this cool little coffee shop that is hands down the girliest place I've ever been in my entire life. But they totally loved it, so it was worth it for us to go. Even if the thing they sold wasn't really coffee per se, it was good. I got you a drink and it's called the Unicorn. Sure is the unicorn one. With all Are this you sure? How yeah. can you tell that's the unicorn one? Mm, I like it, but not super girly. Hey Ben. How do you feel about the super girly place? Now I feel happy because I got this awesome drink. <laughs> it worked. This is Singha Park. It's a beautiful park right here, just on the outskirts of Chiang Rai. Cool lion statue that's massive, kind of a botanical gardens type area over here. A beautiful pond. There's a farm where you can do a petting zoo. There's restaurants. It's all kinds of things, but it's really, really beautiful. Kids can get all their energy out running and playing in this massive grass field. Totally worth coming. I wish I could stay up there all day, but it's so hot. I'm exhausted. Run, run, and jump. Okay, we are getting ready for day two. Heading to the cave fish temple first, about an hour and a half away from town. And then we're going to the Golden Triangle to where Laos and Myanmar or Burma hit Thailand. We're gonna get in a boat and kinda see the water there on one of the most dangerous rivers on earth. It's gonna be a good day. Well, it's gonna be an exciting day. I hope it's gonna be a good day. Here we are at Wat Tem Pla, which is roughly translated to mean the Temple of the Fish Cave. The story kind of goes that in 1980, a Buddhist monk came to this area and was like, hey, this is really pretty. There should be a temple here. So he built one. When he got here, there were wild monkeys everywhere. And he was like, ah, we'll just leave them here. So there's wild monkeys all over the place. We'll see. The most interesting part is because of the wild monkeys, as you come in, you get a stick. Let's go find some monkeys. I don't know how I feel about that. You look way too happy, like way too, look at her. Monkeys are mean, y'all. If you never met a monkey in real life, they're mean. The rules of the sticks are simple. You don't hit people, you hit monkeys. And you only hit monkeys if the monkeys attack you. Do you understand? Uh, I need a verbal yes. 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 Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this really unique structure doesn't look very Thai at all, and it looks like it's hundreds of years old. It was actually built in the 90s. Oh, 
Who wants to go in the cave temple with me? No. Okay, Ben, you ready? Uh, Let's go. We're not gonna get lost. Like a monk prayer area over there. That looks like a safe electrical wire. Don't touch that, Ben. Um, I'm done. Cool. I don't know how far down it goes. I'm not gonna find out. That was a fun adventure. Let's go home. I don't know who you are watching this video and what you believe and what your spiritual or religious background is, but I can tell you there's some dark feeling stuff in that cave. Personally, I believe in Jesus. I believe that um, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And there's a freedom and a hope and kind of a weightlessness that comes with that. And there's a lot of these places that we're visiting that just feel like spiritual, just like heaviness. And there are some temples that we've been to that have this kind of feeling of peace, but nothing I've felt feels like walking into worshiping Jesus. And that's my opinion. If that's not where you stand, then that's great. You do what you want to do. Um, but man, I'm just reminded again, being in a place like this, that there is so much freedom in God. And I'm just kind of celebrating that today. Okay, we've been here for a long time and haven't seen a monkey and we just saw one. These are macaques. And I've seen so many of these in my life. I've never seen one in the wild. Well, in the temple, we're walking towards them. This was one of the coolest parts of the entire Chiang Rai trip. Seeing these macaque monkeys in their natural habitat was just really so incredible. And outside of Kaylee getting a little too close to one of them and throwing food a little bit more at it than near it, uh, the monkeys weren't mean at all. You're okay. Now I wish I could say the same thing for the humans because some of the tourists were just being absolute jerks and I, I may or may not have had to go over there and uh, set them straight a little bit. So outside of that, it was a totally cool experience. We even at one point got to see just a mass of monkeys coming down these steps following these people that were walking. Uh, we saw some with babies and some that were older and some that were younger and it was just such a cool experience seeing, for the most part, humans and animals living totally in harmony together. The drive from this temple to the Golden Triangle should have taken us about 45 minutes, but it took us so much longer than that because we kept having to pull over just to look at the views. The fields meeting the jungle, meeting the mountains was so utterly breathtaking that we kept pulling over and just looking. It was one of those like, I'm in this moment just for this moment kind of things where we had to stop and we just had to take in all of the beauty around us. It really is one of the most breathtaking locations we have ever laid eyes on. So this area is called the Golden Triangle and it's where Laos right over here, Myanmar or what used to be named Burma right over here and Thailand where we are all meet at the Mekong River. Now this area was actually named by the CIA in America weirdly enough uh, because it was where the most opium in the world came through and eventually got to the Western world. So all the heroin that came to the US, a good chunk of it used to come right across this river here. Now a lot of it's made in Afghanistan and it's been a long time since that was the case, but this, this area kind of stuck. It's still called the Golden Triangle. So one of the things that we're most excited about on this trip is uh, getting to go into Laotian water and Burmese or Myanmar water. So we're gonna go on this boat right now and uh, get to go to these two other countries, which is really cool. Okay, so now we're on this boat on the Mekong River and one of the reasons I'm most excited about this is just because the Mekong River is incredible. Uh, this goes through most of these uh, countries in Southeast Asia and just like three weeks ago, somebody caught a stingray in this water uh, down by Cambodia that was 661 pounds and it was 13 feet long. So this muddy water 
is not just muddy water. Uh, it has massive, massive fish and things in it. The show River Monsters has filmed here a bunch of times and they have caught some of the biggest fish in the world in this water. So uh, I'm glad we rented a big boat because uh, I don't want to be eaten by a giant fish. Uh, but that kind of brings me to the next part. That's what's so cool about this is that this boat um, was like $40 to rent the whole boat for our family. Again, Thailand, man. I love Thailand. All right, technically right now we're in Burmese water and we are in Myanmar or Burma as it used to be called. One of the perks of carrying around a nice camera or a drone or something like that and making videos for YouTube is that you walk into a restaurant like this and they automatically take you to the best seat in the house with the best view. Totally worth it. That's gonna be hilarious. Okay, so when we first saw this place, we thought, oh, it's a cool restaurant. It looks like it has a cool view. We might as well stop. But really, this place is really cool. There's all these awesome seating areas where you get to sit right next to the water that is unrealistically blue. And I say that in a good way and a bad way because it's definitely fake, but it's really cool. Food was good. It was a great place to stop on the way to the Golden Triangle. Uh, I would definitely do it again. Okay, it is the beginning of day three and yesterday was honestly just so tiring. And we're like, man, I just want a cup of coffee. We actually found this place about an hour away from Chiang Rai called Doi Chang, where there is a massive coffee plantation. And we were like, why would we just go get a cup of coffee when we can get the whole coffee experience? Okay, so we are on the way to Doi Chang Coffee. We're on the road again, on and we are- On the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. <laughs> Autumn, we're in Thailand. <laughs> oh, okay. Boom, kong kong king krong. We spent like five minutes looking that up on Google Translate, and I'm so glad we did. <laughs> that was, maybe we're the only ones that think that's funny, but I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, guys, look at this. Yeah, that's so blue and clean. Oh. So we just pulled over on the side of the road because we were driving through the mountains and there was all of a sudden just this view. Okay, the thing you're about to watch is beautiful, yes, but it is nothing compared to real life. I just, I just had to say that. It's amazing, amazing. All right, we're back on the road again on our way to the coffee plantation and we're super pumped about coffee. But oh my goodness, these views. I wish we could just show you a video of just this view the entire way. Okay, so we had to stop. We're not to the coffee plantation yet, but this view, you guys, it's incredible. You have to see it. It's absolutely unbelievable. So we have to get out and we have to show you what it looks like. And here it is now. Okay, so this is hands down the most treacherous mountain road I've ever been on in my life. There are so many spots where literally the pavement from the side of the road, there's a drop. Like there's no curb, there's no like blockade, there's no guardrail, it just goes down. And there's these crazy cool coffee shops like this one right here that are just on the side. Um, but man, it's the most beautiful view I've ever seen in my entire life. We thought we were just driving out to some coffee plantation, 
which obviously coffee has to be farmed at elevation, so we should have thought it's in the mountains. But we were just thinking, oh, a coffee plantation. But this, this might be the best thing we've seen on this entire trip. Okay, after crazy treacherous mountain roads that were genuinely freaky and we downplayed it for the video because it was so beautiful, but seriously, freaky. We're here at Deutsche and Coffee. So right behind us, there is a cafe where they, uh, where they serve the coffee. Right over here is the Academy of Coffee where they teach their baristas how to make it. And then back here is the processing plant where they make the coffee. And right up here is a rainstorm. So quit videoing and let's go. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm definitely bringing one of these home for my friend Evan. Evan, this is coming to you. Doi Chain Coffee, you can see right there, the logo behind me. Uh, it has such a cool background. So basically 30 years ago, uh, the government came to this area and it was almost all opium production. And they said, hey, if we give you coffee beans and we give you the, uh, the stuff you need to survive, will you make coffee instead? So this whole area started producing coffee instead of opium and made a whole lot more money doing it. But this also, kind of led to the people near here feeling taken advantage of. And they said, well, we used to get 100% of the profits and now we're getting next to none of them because the coffee shops get them and the, you know, the whole means of production. So all these people in this area, this Doi Ching area came together and said, we're gonna do this together and make a co-op coffee company. The production here is owned by the farmers and it's all just this community driven thing. And the coffee just tastes really great. The first one is the iced caramel macchiato. Try it. Ooh. Yeah, that's killer. The iced coffee. Ooh, that is really good. Man, that is just good coffee. Mocha no, fresh. No, I'm gonna like this. Ooh. That's like a light roast mocha wrap, but I like it. It's good. It works. This is the chocolate espresso tiramisu crepe cake. No, you can't have any. This is mine. Share, mommy. Don't be selfish. I gotta be honest. I'm not a fan. What? It's Hold so your creamy. It's like thick, and I, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Okay, I'm sorry. I must take over the camera at this point because he is dead wrong. This is delicious and worth that treacherous drive that terrified me to my core. Okay, let me try one more time. The nice thing I can say is it's all yours. I don't like it at all. Everything else is great, but... There's something seriously wrong with my husband. Okay, two more for the road. Okay, today is it. Our last day in Chiang Rai tier, day four. We have loved getting to see this city. Um, it's gonna be a bummer to see it go in the rearview mirror, but today we're gonna get to see the best thing of all. The thing that we've been leaving to the end, the magnum opus, the piece de resistance. I'm sorry I brought France into this. I'm sorry. But seriously, like the coolest thing in this city, it's called the White Temple. So the White Temple that we're about to go see is actually not in Chiang Rai proper. It's actually a little ways away. But the good news is it's really close to our Airbnb. And when I say really close, I mean like it's there. Like it was right out of our window the whole time. It's a one minute walk to the White Temple. Okay, 30 seconds later we're here. And that is not a joke. It has been 30 seconds since I shot the last video. We should have walked. <laughs> we really should have walked. Well, when I typed in the directions uh, on on uh, Google Maps, it only gave me walking directions, like driving wasn't an option. And I was like, we're American. But we should have walked. This is one I am really pumped about. This is the White Temple. Now the White Temple- Hold on, Dad, hold on. This is one of the coolest bathrooms you've ever seen in history. 
I'm a big fan of bathrooms, and this is one of the coolest bathrooms. Look at the building, this is a bathroom. Look at the beautiful gold. It's a bathroom. Check this out. Just give me just one hour. So now that we've gotten that out of the way and seen the big gold bathroom for Ben, this is the White Temple. Now the White Temple I think is one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture in all of Thailand. And unlike most of the other temples that we've seen, this temple was actually not made for worship, it was made for art. So the guy who made this is an artist who looked at all the temples in Thailand and said, man, the art is beautiful, but I think we can do this massive thing to just like be the end all be all to temples in Thailand. And the guy absolutely nailed it. This is the most beautiful piece of architecture I think I've ever seen in my life. It's all white. There's a couple gold structures on the, the uh, grounds here too, but they're, they're just absolutely mesmerizing because they have little bits of different metals and they have little bits of different pieces of glass and shards of mirror in them. So the whole thing sparkles in the daytime. Also, this thing was created in the late 90s, but they say it'll be done in another 50 years. So they're just making it this like ode to Thai art and it's just, it's spectacular. Here we are at the entrance of the White Temple and as you can see right behind me, there's this cool art feature where there's hands that are reaching up as if they're reaching up from hell towards the White Temple, which is meant to symbolize heaven as you go across the bridge, which is really, really interesting to us because Buddhists don't even believe in heaven and hell. It just kind of shows me that there's a longing deep inside all of us that really longs for something eternal. The inside of the temple honestly might be even cooler than the outside of the temple. There's artwork all the way around the whole thing on the inside and it's absolutely beautiful artwork. Cool Thai culture stuff, really, really pretty, but mixed in with these weird pop culture references. Like there's Spider-Man and Iron Man and a Pepsi truck and Yoda and like all these weird things mixed in, but done really eloquently. Like it's really, really beautiful. I saw, I think a Star of David in there was what it looked like. Um, there were definitely some Christian references. There was just all these different things that were kind of connecting pop culture with religion, with like a Buddhist twist. It was really interesting. Uh, definitely more art than temple. To sum it all up, this is hands down the coolest temple in all of Thailand that we've seen. Uh, really, really, truly remarkable. I've never seen anything like it. So now we are heading to the Blue Temple. Hopefully it even holds a candle to this. It'll be cool. Keep watching. Just, it'll, it, keep watching. All right, this here is the Blue Temple, and it's blue, um, that's why it's called that. Also, it's one of the newer temples in Thailand. It was built here in the last decade. Um, it's kind of a middle ground, sort of like the White Temple, between artwork and worship. It's mostly artwork, um, but there are actually people here worshiping as well. So, the Blue Temple. Yeah, so kind of like the last temple, uh, this is mostly art-based. Uh, I didn't actually see anyone actually worshiping in there. There was a lot of Instagram uh, Buddhists in there <laughs> who were posing like they were doing something for a picture and then would instantly get up and walk away. But again, the artwork is incredible. And to think about the fact that this is all like carved and stamped and, and just the, even just the colors on here, the fact that these last outside, there's so much uh, work that's put into this and so much devotion. And yet again, I am blown away by the ingenuity, uh, just the artistic ability and the love of Thai people for their culture. So yeah, awesome place. I mean this with all due respect, but I feel like if Disney World, the Epcot area had a Thailand section, it would look exactly like this. 
That was the end of our Chiang Rai trip. Um, really loved getting to see this city and getting to just experience the things that are here. Uh, it's a much smaller city than a lot of the other places that we've been on this trip. But uh, they had such a huge emphasis on art and beauty and nature and um, really like that's what I love about all the temples anyway. So I thought it was really cool. Also subscribe and like if you enjoy our videos because it makes a big difference for us. No, I'm doing it in your glasses, see? Oh. Thumbs up. Thought you were telling me to give a thumbs up. I was Thanks like, for doing I can. It. Whatever you say, I'll do. Subscribe That's... and like. You gonna dance to try and get him to? <laughs> no. For the next four days, we are going to be traveling around Chiang Rai. That didn't sound good. Say, ooh, gold soap. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, gold soup. Don't mind gold if I soap. Do. Ooh, goo soup. <laughs> it's okay. Gold soap. Go. Ooh. Ooh, gold soup. Ooh, good soap. Gold soap. Check out this gold soap. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> that was so awkward. <laughs> okay, so these things are super creepy. Almost like a ghetto Thai Chuck E. Cheese or something. That's really irreverent. I probably shouldn't have said that. But basically you can pay five to ten baht and put it in there and it makes them dance and sing. And it's just a way for the temple to get money from people. I will see that in my nightmares for years to come. Ugh.